Hello there. In this video we're going to just introduce another set of sequence of numbers that has some occurrences uh, in the set of number theory and also calculus as well. And that is what we call the Lucas numbers. So the Lucas numbers are defined similar to Fibonacci. Uh, so L0 is going to be defined to be equal to 2, L1 is going to be 1, and Ln is going to be equal to Ln minus 1 plus Ln minus 2 for N greater than or equal to 2. So we're just going to discuss some basic properties of the Lucas numbers and their connection to Fibonacci and, of course, the golden ratio. All right, so let's just talk about uh, the similarities that these numbers have with the respect to the Fibonacci numbers. So the only real difference between this and the Fibonacci number definition is that we start with 2 and not 0. Uh, the first Lucas number is equal to the uh, first Fibonacci number, and the recursive sequence is actually uh, the same exact thing. It's just the starting position. So if we were to construct the Lucas numbers, so we have 2, 1, and then uh, from here on we're just going to add the preceding 2. So we're going to have 3, 4, 7, 11, 18, 29, and so on. So these are the first few Lucas numbers. Alright, so let's list, so these are LN. So let's just go ahead and list the Fibonacci numbers to sort of compare these uh, to each other. So we have 0, 0, 1, I mean 0, 1, 1. Uh, so 1 plus 1 is going to be 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and of course, uh, so on. So can we have any patterns here? Uh, so just take a moment, pause this video, and see if you can see any connection uh, between these rows to each other. So if you look very closely, we have 0 plus 0 is going to be equal to 1. We have 1 plus 2 is going to be equal to 3. We have 1 plus 3 is going to be equal to 4. We have 2 plus 5 is going to be equal to 7. We have 3 plus 8 is going to be equal to 11. And we have, uh, so 8 plus 29 or 8 plus something is going to be 21. So 8 plus 21, which would be the next Fibonacci number in sequence, uh, would be that, right? And we can clearly see that 5 plus 13 is 18. So definitely there is a very intimate connection uh, with this property. Now, here's an interesting uh, question for you. So this is F0. So if we were to define a negative first Fibonacci number, uh, with respect to the Lucas numbers, which one would make sense here? Right, so clearly whatever it is uh, must add to one. So f negative one plus one must be equal to two. So it would only make sense, at least from this in, uh, extension, that the negative first Fibonacci number uh, should be uh, one, at least from this connection. So that's just uh, something a little bit extra. Uh, but from this pattern, we can easily see that the nth Lucas number is going to be equal to the n minus one Lucas number. Uh, plus the n plus first uh, Lucas number, right? Uh, because they're pretty much always different uh, from their vertical uh, component, right? So that's the first property of Lucas numbers and how they sort of connect uh, with Fibonacci. So since Fibonacci is sort of generated by powers of phi, of course the Lucas numbers should also um, be generated by powers of phi. So recall uh, that the nth Fibonacci number is going to be equal to fn minus minus phi uh, to the minus m, all divided by the square root of 5. Uh, and one can find, uh, using properties of phi, that this is just going to be equal to phi n minus 1 minus phi to the power of m, all over the square root of 5. So these are equivalent, and I leave to you to sort of verify that those two are equal if you have not already done so. All right, so let's find out the generating function for the set of Lucas numbers. So ln, as we know, or you can prove that ln is equal to fn minus 1 uh, plus fn plus 1, a fairly easy proof by mathematical induction, is going to be equal to, so we're going to use the generating functions for fn minus 1 and fn plus 1. So it's going to be phi m minus 1 minus 1 minus phi m minus 1 all over the square root of 5. And then we have plus phi m plus 1 minus 1 minus phi m plus 1 all over the square root of 5. Alright, so let's just rearrange this. Everything's over the same denominator, so we can regroup this as we want. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group our phi's together and I'm going to group our 1 minus phi's uh, in the same exact term. So that's going to give us phi m minus 1 plus phi m plus 1 all over the square root of 5. So that's going to be my first term. And then I'm going to have minus, so I'm going to have 1 minus phi to the m minus 1 plus 1 minus phi to the m plus 1 all over the square root of 5. So again, using our powers of phi, we can reduce this. Um, so phi m plus 1 plus phi m plus 1 over the square root of 5 is almost like a golden ratio average, uh, which pretty much averages into the 1 in the middle. So one can verify that this is going to be equal to phi to the power of m, and this term one can verify that that's going to be equal to negative 1 minus phi to the power of n. Right? So therefore, this gives us that ln is just going to be phi n plus 1 minus phi to the power of n. Actually a nicer uh, generating function than that of the Fibonacci numbers, at least to me. And again, you can use properties of the Fibonacci numbers that we derived before to sort of prove uh, these basic identities. Right? Now there is one more very important application of the Lucas numbers that I did bring up some time ago. Uh, because, you know, how do you generate uh, phi n over phi to the power of n if n is really large? So this theorem, which I'm not going to prove here because it requires some tools that we have yet discussed, and that is this. So if we take phi to the power of n and we add a half to it, and we find the greatest integer that is less than or equal to this number, which is um, denoted by these uh, brackets, it's always going to be equal to the nth Lucas number. Now this is interesting, and again this is what we call the floor function. Um, some people will write it as this, so phi n plus one half with a little floor bracket, but it's the same exact thing. Some people call it the greatest integer function. Again we're going to prove this later uh, once we have a little bit more tools, but I'm just going to work through a couple examples to just see um, how to use this. So I'm going to look at say phi 3 plus one half. So this is going to generate the third Lucas number to sort of guess. So phi to the power of three is going to be equal to 4.3 approximately plus 0.5. Actually I think it's closer to 4.2 actually but in this case it doesn't matter. So the greatest integer less than or equal to 4.7 is going to be equal to 4, right? Which of course is equal to the third Lucas number so no problem there. So let's assume I want the sixth Lucas number, which we know to be 18. So this is going to be equal to the greatest integer less than or equal to the pow phi to the power of 6 plus a half, which is approximately equal to 17.9 plus 0.5, which is equal to the greatest integer less than or equal to 18.4, which is going to be equal to 18. So that now I have seen some people um, claim that the floor or the greatest integer less than or equal to phi n is Lucas number uh, n. So in this case you can see that that won't be the case. So just be careful of that claim. Um, because it's not true and this would be a counterexample to that. right? So what about the 25th Lucas number? So the 25th Lucas number is going to be generated by phi to the power of 25 plus a half which you can of course uh, get uh, that to be approximately equal to uh, 167,761.0 uh, uh, and then we're going to add 0.5 to that um, but that 0.5 is not going to send it up to an integer so that means the 25th Lucas number is going to be 167761 now of course we can because this does require us to have powers of phi to the 25, and it's possibly easier to sort of um, generate what L25 is using just the recursive definition of L25. So clearly we can see that if we know phi 25, then we can easily get uh, L25. But a very good question is, okay, what if we have L25? Can we use this to generate at least an approximation to phi 25? Of course that requires some properties and some serious discussions on the floor function, which we'll talk about later. But for now, we'll just leave that as an exercise to you to sort of see if you can figure out a cute property for that. 
Anyway, this is just a set of Lucas numbers, um, which does has its applications elsewhere, which we'll bring up later. Anyway, hope you enjoyed.